Hello, I'm Douglas Miranda, and in this video, I will teach you how to assign the money using as base geospatial data and water gems for ArcMap. Now, in this exercise, let's see how to apply Load Builder to allocate spatial demands to wider ArcMap model using the water gems for ArcMap interface. So first taking a look in the material that we have for to do this using Arc Catalog, accessing the load builder folder within the Arc Dist GIS folder delivered with this course. Uh, we have um, a water gems database file, it's the WTG Point MDB. It's a folder that is attached with the geodatabase named workshop 14. Point MDB. So uh, this is one file, two files that we're going to use, and we will use uh, also the meters shape file using the preview tab. You can see the elements. So the meters will be used to, uh, to assign automatically this uh, information of them and to the to the to the network using two approaches: the nearest node option and the nearest pipe option. And we have another information: the population census that has um, information about population. If you access the preview tab using the preview mode, we see that we have uh, eight polygons. And each polygon has a population information and density information. So it will be used also in this exercise to calculate demands but but not using the meters shape file but using this population information let's now skip to the ArcMap interface Let's create a new file using the blank map template. On the previous exercise, we created uh, a new hydraulic module. Now we are about to add an existing hydraulic module. So accessing the Bentley Water Gems menu, file add existing hydraulic model and let's select the load builder folder and there we have the workshop 14 file it will be loaded uh, together with the geodatabase that was previously attached If we didn't have this database attached, we will see uh, another dialog box to create this database file, as we saw in the previous exercise.
So in this hydraulic uh, module, uh, we have an existing uh, scenario. So accessing Bentley Water Gems analysis scenarios to load the scenarios manager. There is a base scenario. Uh, with a double click in the scenario, we can add to the interface the properties window. And it has a demo alternative called base average daily. So we are going to create a new scenario to um, to restore all the load builder res results. Um, so for the three approaches, we will have a single scenario for each one. So the first approach will be the, the nearest node method. So let's uh, open load builder. Load builder is available under Bentley Water Gems tools load builder. So clicking new. The first approach is the nearest mode node mode. It's available under pont load data nearest node. Clicking next. On the node layer, you will select the feature class that will receive the the demand. Uh, the demand information. So click in the ellipsis button. Let's access the workshop 14 geodatabase. Under workshop 14, we have the list of geodatabase feature classes. Let's select the junction feature class. On the millimeter layer, let's select the meters shape file. The meters shape file is also available under the load builder folder. On the load type field, it's an option to 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 select. If you decide an attribute that classifies the the demands for type by type, like residential, commercial, or industrial, if it's relevant, you can select. For this exercise, it's not necessary, so let's select the none option. On the usage field, it's the shape files attribute that that has the demand information. So it's the demand column and the information unit it's gallon per minute. Click next. After processing, load builder will return the sum of the all meters elements. It's a total of 1,088.6 gallons per minute. And there is an option to apply a multiplier and a pattern. If you have the, 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 the type attribute on the, on the previous step, you will have two or more lines in this table. And we have another option to apply a global multiplier for all the demand types. In this exercise, we will define a global multiplier to add the unaccounted water in the system. In this exercise, this uh, unaccounted water is 
uh, 50% of the total. So to add this demand, we need to apply a uh, multiplier equals by 1.176. This calculation is detailed in the page 49. So in the global multiplier, let's add 1.176. Clicking next. Here is a summary of the nodes, the junctions, and the total demand that will be added to the demand alternative. In the next step, it's where we define the demand alternative that will receive this information. On the label, let's type the method we are using now in your node. Let's create a new alternative to leave the base scenario with the existing alternative with no addition. So the new alternative will be called new node and the parent alternative will be the base average daily. Clicking in finish. We have the load builder summary with 102 load ex loads exported. Next, let's create the scenario to calculate the near node method. In the scenario manager, let's create a new child scenario using base as parent. So right click on the base scenario, new child scenario. Let's name it as near node and on its um, properties, let's select under the demand alternative, the near node alternative. Let's make this an arc current. Right click, make current, and now we can compute the scenario. Now let's jump to the second approach, the nearest pipe option. So reloading load builder. Let's now create a new load builder process. Selecting the rest node, the rest pipe under point load data. Clicking next. On the pipe layer, let's select the, the pipe feature classes, feature class that will be used to receive the nearest water meters. So let's select under water disk GIS load builder workshop 14. Let's select the pipe feature class. Let's use for the load assignment the option distance weight net instead of using the weaker distribution. On the node layer, let's add the junction feature class. On the millimeter layer, it's time to access under load builder, the meters shape file. Again, on the load type field, let's select none. On the polyline distribution, equal distribution. Demand for the usage field in gallons per minute. Clicking next.
now it's time to apply that global multiplier 1.176 click next twice and finally let's name this process as nearpipe creating a new alternative again name it near pipe using the base average daily alternative as parent closing load builder summary and load builder dialog box Let's now create the representative scenario. Let's use the base to create a second charge. Near pipe. And picking the demand alternative near pipe. Okay, so we are good to run. Make the scenario near pipe current and computing this scenario. So finally, the third approach where we will be using the population census file. In this approach, we will also be using a, um, another tool that help us to generate the the T-Sync polygon uh, layer. So with the T-Sync polygon, uh, we will be uh, adding for each junction a representative polygon that combined with the population census uh, information, geospatially, we can determine the demand applying uh, uh, demand per capita. So first, we need to create the t polygon under what Bentley Water Gems menu. Within the tools, we have the t polygon tool. So in this dialog box on the node layer, Let's select the nodes that we have a representative polygon. So under Load Builder folder, selecting the Workshop 14 MDB, select the Junction Feature Class. On the Node ID field, select the Element ID option. On the next, we can define the t polygons boundary using an existing polygon boundary layer or using the buffering percentage method that will uh, run the whole uh, project and add a percentage of the average inside the area. So let's keep the option to apply a 10% of buffering area to define the external boundary. Click next. Let's select the, the output file destination. So I will select the load builder folder and name it as T poly. It will save a shape file. Clicking finish. We now have the chasing polygon saved in the load builder folder. To understand how it looked like, we can add as a new information using the add data button. So selecting the load builder folder, here is the tpoly shape file. And here we have, and now we can see that we have for each junction one polygon. 
let's add also the population saison strip file so we can see now the eight polygons um, let's uh, remove the polygons uh, fill color to see better how the polygons is overlapping each other so let's go to the table of contents with a double click on the population census um, let's click on symbology tab on the symbol fill color no color let's also change the outline color let's put red with a different thickness apply so now it's better so combining this two information we can uh, calculate demands with the third approach let's run again load builder tools load builder click in new now we will use this third option population land use data to load estimation by population click next uh, first in the service area layer it's the layer that contains the area to be used on the demo calculation it's where we will apply the tpoly chip file the chasing polygon on the population layer we will use the population census on the population density type let's select the type because we have three types of uh, population residential one residential two and commercial and on the population density field let's select density and it's in pop pop population by acre so on the page uh, 70 we have the densities for each uh, demand type click in next it will compute let's apply that same global multiplier we can see we have a smaller number than than the other the other two approaches let's define the new alternatives name let's use popland use creating a new alternative Now it's time to create our last scenario. So it's the third charge. And it will use our last demand alternative. And now we just need to make this scenario current and compute. So it's three different approaches. This third one, we can see clearly that we have a smaller total amount of water.
If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.